Hello and welcome to another Overlord Law video and today we are going to take a closer look at Nezowick's very own interior life, meaning shops, supplies and amenities will be given a closer look. But before we're going to do so, let me thank my Patreons for supporting this channel, as well as all users of the YouTube Thanks function for making one-time donations. Also please check out my fantasy channel, it's linked down in the video description. Now with all of that said, we will start with one of the most crucial things, gold. While Nezowick has an immense wealth to the point where Yuri Alpha in the third volume of Overlord's light novels was physically unable to tidy up the initial level of the treasury vault, simply because there was no space to put all of the treasures, the scepters, the cutlery, the crowns and the jewelry, the pristine invaluable weapons and items, or the enormous heap of gold coins into storage, simply because every single nook and cranny had already been completely filled with other, even more valuable treasures. But still, while the life of Eins Olgon and the lives of his NPCs, with the exception of Aura and Mare, are infinite, the amount of gold wasn't. Hence why Einzelgon made sure to a. earn any money he actually had to spend first, even if this was quite hard to get the amount of money necessary for the operation of even low level infiltration operations simply by being a common adventurer, well not common but you get my drift, and b. with the raid on the storage of the eight fingers and the acquisition of the sorcerer kingdom as well as its vessels and allies a potentially endless amount of gold coins can now be acquired by throwing produce such as grain or vegetables alongside ores or basically anything other that has some use in the new world into a materia gold converter simply known as the shredder meaning that Einzulgon could sacrifice anything that the new world produces in order to get the money Nazar requires if the amount of sacrificial goods is just high enough. And it takes, again according to Einzelgon, quite large amounts of such comparably simply things as ore or grain to get a decent amount of gold from it. And this is also the reason why Nazarick, or rather the Sorcerer Kingdom, levies still taxes and tolls upon its population and has such a vested interest in growing the economy, because the gold created from the economic activity, whether it be it in the form of transmutation via the shredder or collecting gold taxes, is needed to pay everything in Nazarick. Scrolls for example. In order to manufacture such simple things as message scrolls, Demiurge had to find and maintain a sufficient level of two-legged sheeps. And while this level of animal husbandry is quite high in its intensity, so is Nazarick hunger for scrolls. But the skin of the two-legged sheep is not enough in order to actually create the message scrolls. You are furthermore in need of a caster that is able to cast the message spell and gold to pay a tribute to the inscription mechanics that will then fashion the magic spell into the spell of the scroll. And you can clearly see the economic mechanics of an online game here, because all of the gold that could be earned in Yggdrasil online by mining or slaying foes needed to be taken out of the economy eventually, otherwise the gold price in the game would have crashed, because otherwise the value of the gold would have crashed a long time ago, thereby making the cash shop quite unattractive, so the developers had to levy all sorts of gold requiring mechanisms upon the players in the form of crafting or even reviving the dead in order to take gold out of Yggdrasil Online's economy. And the upkeep of such a vast guild base as Nazarick is most certainly a way to do it, from the blizzard effects in the fifth floor that can be turned off to the various traps and constantly respawning pop monsters that got their name from quite literally popping into existence at no additional cost per respawn, the upkeep fee for the Grey Tomb has to pay 
everything. But just aside from its immediate military needs, Nesowick also had quite the extensive role-playing focused area on the ninth floor, where basically everything that a town or city needed could be found, from barber shops to more commoner focused bars to more elegant facilities, such as the establishment simply known as Bar, where the sous chef frequently delivers high quality drinks to more exalted visitors. And we are talking about Demiurge Okokutus, for example. For both of them, like to enjoy a drink in silence when the time allows it. Furthermore, Ein Zulgon, just like the rest of Neswick, has access to an excellent hot spring area, the Fort and Cold Springs, and the area guardian that is employed there is, to put it mildly, also quite strong. Strong enough that Eins, Demiurge, and Mare, as well as Cocutus, had to put on armor in order to venture into the woman's bath, for an emergency rescue mission, of course. And finally, we also have received quite a deep look into the canteen of Nazarbek, where normally, at least from Ein Solgon's perspective, employees take their meal. And as you probably have guessed it, Eins caused quite the commotion once he entered this area, where normally only the more common folk would eat. Likely because Ein Solgon is awesome. Memes aside though, the cantina looks like you would expect it from a normal canteen. Various dirty tables dotting the room, and the food is served on a counter by this very hilarious creature right here. And I have to say, he was one of the unexpected little highlights in the 15th volume that I had been absolutely unprepared for. He's not only an orc, but a wild orc, and looks quite imposing, with his walk chains, his butcher knives, and his tattoo that quite literally says, fresh meat. And since he is, at least viewed from the New World's point of view, quite powerful, let's just say that you don't want to anger him, unless you want to become dinner. Because after taking a good look at Eclair in one of the side stories for example, the wild orc thought about cooking penguins for a change. But of course, aside from preparing such unusual dishes, he runs his canteen with high motivation and energy, feeling joy and taking great pride in his work that is essential for the functioning of Nazarick. Of course, once Ein Solgon visited his establishment, he took all of this and amped it up to 11, making quite the scene while Eins just wanted to have a normal talk with the elves, to the point that Ein Solgon had to raise his voice and remind the head chef that he can't eat anything. But the wild orc should still get his moment to shine, because while Aura was outside being sadistic, a topic that will get its own video, Mare and Eins prepared a dish, which in part had been created with the help of the head chef, who provided ingredients with almost no smell, in order to avoid attracting predators near his location in the great forest of Iwasha. A plan that only partially had worked. But again, more about that later. Lastly, while Nazarick is able to create food from literally nothing, for example, the Lizardmen were provided by items that back in Uctra 9 had only a description of being able to provide food without actually being able to do so. But that started to work as the law had intended the moment Nazarick had arrived in the new world at least until the fish farm was up and operational. Nazarick ever since the side story that dealt with the defeat of the sealed evil tree, one of the battles that I would love to see animated, because the floor guardians could at least be let loose for a moment here. The tomb had actually been able to grow a significant part of its own food, thanks to the vast sixth floor of Nazarick, where Trends, Dryads and Aulrauns live. And the sous chef, for example, gets his ingredients increasingly from internal sources and tries to fashion it into ever better drinks. So as you see, the interior of Nazarick, aside from just the military aspect, is fleshed out quite a bit and very intriguing to look deeper into, at least in my opinion. And that's why I'm very, very pleased 
that all of this had been expanded upon in the 15th novel, at least in my opinion. So what is yours? Please let me know it down in the comment section. And with that said, I say thank you very much for watching and special thanks to Dash 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 Ada Daddy Ada Bad Girl Ye Bad Burrito 316 Beezer Ben C Brandon D Chrissy Crowley 0221 Sia Crystal Prime Dead Slime Death is Mercy Deathless Dragonlord Demon Xenomorph 1987, Devin Downen, Ding Dong, Duck Wagon, Dunkler Krieger, Dystopia, Dystopia II, Enigmatic Unicorn, Thurwal Shivan, Guy with Dead Head, Hector Moreno, Hoss, Haster, Jacob G, Jana B, Jason, J. Morris, Chromius, Kyle R, Lee K. Long, Legendarius, Lelouch Ribetania with a mustache, Lexus Fox, Lord Nishikian Rai, Lord Touch Me, Love Razor, Merovec, Mr. Shoes, Mr. Tweaker, Michael R, Michael Y, Nope, Oh Hell No, Normal Toad, Oh Kill, Overlord General Gasper, Patty Pantom, Personage, Primus 11, Rhino Mir, Cune Karakos P, Shergox is Daddy, Shadow Lightning Wolf, Shrine Keeper, Super Tier Magic Batista Bomb, Supreme Cheese, Staris, Ted, Texas Deer, The Orc War Boss, Rock at Smasher, T.E. Wang, Vash Hawkeye, Vegito 27, Venture Fanatic, Wilhelm, Xenokai, and Zonagon. Thanks, guys. Anyway, have a nice day, and I hope to see you all again soon on my next video.